the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on how to create and update an index in Microsoft Word. Now an index is something you can insert into any Word document, but it's particularly useful if you have a long document. What an index is, if you're not sure, is it lists the terms and topics discussed in the document listed in alphabetical order. So the index is normally found at the end of the document. You can go to the end of the document, you can see all of the main headings, all of the main subjects or topics in the index listed in alphabetical order, and it will show you what page number those topics are located on. So it's similar to a table of contents in many ways, except that it appears at the end of the document and it's in alphabetical order. And it is pretty simple to create an index in Word. There's just a couple of things you need to do prior to actually inserting the index into the document. So let's jump into this example. What you can see here on the screen is that I have a document and this is related to Game of Thrones. Now it's not particularly long, it's about six pages or so long. But what you can see here is that I have certain headings and subheadings throughout my document. So Game of Thrones is the title and I've marked this with a heading one word style. I have overview underneath, which is marked with a heading two. As you scroll through, you can see I have a few heading twos and then we move on to the subheadings, House Stark, which is a heading three, and we have various other heading threes throughout this document. So essentially my document is made up of heading ones, heading twos and heading threes. And what I want to do is I want to put these into an index at the end of the document. So what I essentially need to do prior to inserting the index is mark all of the entries that I want to appear in that index. So I'm going to select Game of Thrones. I'm going to go up to my References tab and you can see that I have an index group just here. Now one of the options I have is Mark Entry. Now because I've highlighted the word Game of Thrones, it's picked that up as the title of this entry. Now you can go in and change that if you wanted to say something different in the index, but most of the time you're going to want to keep that the same. There are other things that you can change in here, but for this demonstration I'm just doing a basic index. I'm just going to go straight down to the bottom and I'm going to say Mark. And what you'll see if I move that little box out of the way is that we have some strange looking field codes just here. Now I will say don't worry about that too much, that's just Word's way of specifying that this entry needs to be picked up in the index when we create it. And I'll show you in a moment how you can get rid of those so you can't see them in the document. Now what I want to do is go through this entire document marking everything that I want to appear in that index. So now what I want to do is I want to mark overview. So I'm going to click where it says overview, click back in my mark entry box so it updates, and I'm going to say mark. And I'm going to do the same for cast and characters. I'm going to say mark. Now one little trick here is that cast and characters then has some subheadings. So we have House Stark, we have House Lannister, and we have House Targaryen. Now, if you want the subheadings to appear indented in the index so that you can see that they are, in fact, subtopics of cast and characters, then you can do that when you're marking the entries. So if I select House Stark and click, you can see here it lists House Stark as the main entry. So what I want to do is I'm going to highlight the word House Stark. I'm going to press Control X to cut it, and I'm going to paste it into sub-entry, control V. And I'm going to say the main entry is cast and characters. And then I'm going to click mark. I'm going to do exactly the same for these other subheadings. So House Lannister, I'm going to take that, I'm going to cut it, control X, I'm going to paste it, control V, and that is also a subheading of cast and characters. Click mark. Let's do the same once again for House Targaryen. Control X to cut, Control V to copy, and main entry, cast and characters. So that process there is if you want those headings to appear indented so that you can see that they're part of cast and characters. 
click on Mark. Now we're back to our heading two, so conception and development. Let's click, I'm happy with that being a main entry. And if we scroll down, we have filming, click, mark, and that is it in our document. I'm now gonna click close. So you can see that I've now marked all of those entries that I want to appear in the table of contents. And as I said, if you want to toggle off these little field codes, if you go to the home ribbon and just turn off the show hide markers and that will get rid of those. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the bottom of this document and I would always advise that you put things like table of contents or index pages on a new blank page. So what you might want to do is insert a page break. Now a quick way of doing that is to click at the bottom of your text and press control enter and that's going to put you on a new page. Now I like to give myself a couple of returns because I'm going to go back and add a title for my index in a moment. I'm going to jump up to references and I'm going to go to my index group and I'm going to say insert index. Again I have some options in here so I can choose to right align the page numbers if I want to. I can change the tab leader which is these little dots just here. But for the most part I'm happy with how this is going to look. I'm going to have it in two columns. And you can see I've selected indented so that those items that I did mark as subheadings will show as indented in the index. And I'm going to click on OK. And there we go. So there we have our index. And you can see here we have cast and characters. And then all of those items that we marked as subheadings are slightly indented. So it gives it a little bit of structure and meaning. Now, remember that these are all listed in alphabetical order. They're not in chronological order. So we have cast and characters first, then conception and development, filming, Game of Thrones and overview and the different page numbers that those appear on. So now all I need to do is I can go in and I can just say uh, index if I want to, and I can give that a heading style of heading one. Now it might be that you want to also include the index in your index. So again, all I would need to do is select where we've got index. I'm going to go to references and I'm going to mark this entry. And this is going to be a main entry. I'm going to say mark and click on close. I'm just going to turn off those show hide markers. And what I need to do now is I need to update the index. So it's going to include this new entry that I've marked. So if I click in the index, I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to right click and I have the option there of update field. And you'll see when I click update, I now have that index listed in my index and it's telling me that it's on page six. So just remember that anytime you do make changes, if you add more headings or more items into the bulk of the document, you're going to need to come down to the index and make sure that you do update it either by right clicking. Alternatively, on the references tab, you have an update index button there as well. But that is it. Fairly straightforward. I hope you found that useful and I will see you in the next video tutorial. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.